Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Gababetic, and welcome to today's video. As you can see, I am in the car and I am outside McDonald's actually because I thought it would be a really good chance to do this video today, seeing as my 15 year anniversary is coming up. Actually, the day that you watch this video will be my 15 year anniversary, so happy anniversary in advance to me, I guess. I thought it would be nice to go to McDonald's, treat myself with some gluten free veggie dippers and chips and a chocolate milkshake and talk through my diagnosis story because I haven't actually shared it on the channel before. I wanted to do it for a long time but it never really felt right so now that it's been 15 years and I have the channel kind of going for a while I feel like it is a good time now so yeah that's what this video is about if you enjoy please give it a big thumbs up comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you want to share your own diagnosis stories or anything about your own type 1 diabetes down below please do in the comment section so let's go and get some mcdonald's there really is like no amazing way to hold the camera while <laughs> i'm in the car so i have it kind of like balanced on my knee slash the steering wheel so i'll hold it when i'm finished eating but for now I've been into the McDonald's. The only gluten-free thing is the veggie dipper Happy Meal or the veggie dipper meal. So before I go into the diagnosis story, I'm gonna carb count. My blood sugar is 6.6 .6 on Dexcom. Here are the carb count breakdowns for the Happy Meal. It's actually way more carbs than I thought. So veggie dippers are 20, I think the fries are 30, and then I got a chocolate milkshake because that's my favorite thing ever, and that's also 30. So altogether it's like 82, which is a lot. So I'm gonna take my insulin, but I am going to split it a bit, I think, because I feel like if I take eight units altogether, I'll just go low in this video, and I don't wanna go low in this video. So I'm gonna take, I think, six, no, I'll take five now, and then I'll take maybe the other three or maybe one unit more maybe in like an hour an hour and a half and honestly i don't really vlog outside so that is why i'm not set up in the car at all before we start in the happy meal i got this connect four but i don't think that's going to be any good but let's start off so i've been diagnosed diabetic for 15 years to the day when you're watching this video and i know some of you might be diagnosed longer some of you might be just newly diagnosed but but for anybody that is diagnosed, I'm at the point now in my life where I've had diabetes longer than I haven't had it. And that's a kind of a weird feeling. Like, I really don't remember things without diabetes. Like, I was talking to my nana. I remember the last time we were in America together. And it was definitely when I wasn't diabetic or celiac as well. And that just feels really weird to say that. Oh my god, the McDonald's chocolate milkshake is so good. So yeah, the reason I haven't shared my diagnosis story before is because... You know, you see a lot of stories where people are feeling a bit off, a bit weak, a bit thirsty, and they immediately have a really good doctor and find out that they are type 1 diabetic and they catch it before it gets really serious, before they go into DKA and before any like long-term bad things have happened. My story is not like that at all. So that's why I've never shared it before. To be honest, my diagnosis was very traumatic. I was really glad to be diagnosed, to be able to get insulin and get better, but I was incredibly sick like so sick you couldn't even imagine so it was very traumatic but yeah let's just talk about it now I was diagnosed in 2008 at age 13 and I was actually diagnosed in July so like you know when you're watching this so I had just done my first year in secondary school or high school if you call it in America and I was on my summer holidays. I would have been going into my second year of secondary school or middle school or high school, whatever it's called in America. And at the time that I was diagnosed, I had every symptom that you could think of. Now, you're probably thinking, how could you have every symptom and nobody picked it up? But that's what happened. And it is, diabetes is kind of like that. Like it can definitely go unnoticed. You can have all the symptoms and it just goes unnoticed. Like you think, oh, I'm just a bit thirsty or I've just lost a bit of weight. And you don't realize they're all accumulating together and they're actually showing that you are diabetic. So it's really important to keep an eye on yourself and other people, the signs of type one diabetes. You can find all of that information on any of the diabetes pages or the NHS, anywhere like that, if you want to go look. I had every symptom, the thirst, the hunger, the fatigue. I had these oh these really really bad pains they were like i'd lie in bed and i have pains in my bones that's the only way i could describe it like my bones hurt it's funny because since diagnosis i can actually identify those pains like is when i have a high blood sugar so obviously my blood sugar was off the scale and i was in pain just all over but that seems to be a symptom that i have when i have a high blood sugar nowadays i'll have like 
really bad pains in like my arms and legs in like the bones it feels like i don't know has anyone ever had that but it just they were so bad i was so thirsty i was so weak i was super thin i'm not gonna put a picture in this video because i don't like looking at the photos but like incredibly thin and i'll tell you more about that about when i was diagnosed what weight i actually was but i was like a skeleton that's how i can describe it so yeah i had all these symptoms these are really good veggie dippers let's just say you know they were obviously accumulating for a long time i actually found a diary from when i was a kid and I found an entry at age 10. Now, bearing in mind, I was diagnosed at age 13. And at age 10, one of the entries was that I felt, it said something like, I feel so sick. And it was like, I know something is wrong with me. I feel something is very wrong, like that gut feeling. So always trust your gut because I was right. Like, I don't know if I was becoming diabetic at age 10 and, you know, my immune system was starting to attack the cells of the pancreas or what was happening, but that was a kind of a pivotal moment to go back and look at that and see that even at that age three years before diagnosis i knew something wasn't right now obviously you know with type 1 diabetes there can be like a honeymoon period where you're still making your own insulin and things like that even though you are diabetic so maybe that was going on i don't know that will show you how much time passed between when i was sick and when I actually got diagnosed, that will show you how very sick I was when I was diagnosed. So yeah, I was having all of these symptoms, the thirst, the hunger, this horrible, horrible pain, losing weight. You now I was always thin anyway, so it wasn't like I just dropped the weight immediately. It was just, I can't even describe it. It just kind of didn't really go notice because I was thin. And then if you saw me at diagnosis, you realize just how much weight I'd lost. But anyway, this is all going on. Obviously it's getting worse and worse. The closer to diagnosis that i get so you know the few months before it was extremely bad really really sick i was obviously in dka and didn't know it and i was brought to the doctor like i said to my parents you know i don't feel right they brought me loads and loads of times to gp unfortunately it turned out to be the same gp every time now i'm saying maybe like between like i couldn't give you a number of how many times but a lot of times i was brought to him and i'm not gonna name the practice or anything but the gp there basically just said oh it's just growing pains you know that's why you have these unbearable pains just growing pains you'll be okay you know nothing's wrong don't be worried and you'll be fine like think about that now someone who's basically dying and that's what you're saying to them and you're saying to the parent of that child they're grand like it's grand stop worrying so that is why for so long i went undiagnosed i think because like I was having all of this pain and all the symptoms but I, and I was saying that to my parents and they were bringing me to the doctor what more can they do like that's how it is that's what the doctor says you're fine like what are you gonna do but anyway kept going back and every time I'd just be more and more sick and I think as well like an issue maybe why I went undiagnosed was I was at school during this time but like I was never failing at anything like I was still doing schoolwork and it was the same I was still doing well at school mentally although i was physically screwed mentally i was still doing okay even though i did have like massive headaches and feel like crap all the time so maybe if i had have been not doing well at school it would have been diagnosed faster i don't know but it's very strange like <laughs> you're literally fighting for your life and you can still do well in a test it's just weird okay that was the happy meal so i'm just gonna have my chocolate milkshake while i talk to you i'm just gonna grab a napkin so yeah that's kind of the background so then we'll fast forward to july school's ending summer holidays off and what started to happen at the end of the school year was i started to not be able to like see the board like i'd be looking at it and it'd be really blurry that was kind of the last few weeks of school but you know the last few weeks of school there's not like there's fun things going on and stuff so you're not like at the board every day so anyway when i was doing school work and watching teacher and writing on the board I just couldn't see it like it was really bad so I started I said to my mom I was like maybe I need glasses and then I was off school and I kind of like if a bus was in front of the car like I couldn't read the number I couldn't read the ads on the side of the bus and then it was getting really really bad like I it, everything was blurred like I couldn't really see people's faces right in front of me so it was getting pretty bad the eyesight so we thought right maybe you need glasses just something like that so booked another appointment for the doctor so let's bring you up to now so this is the day of diagnosis in july going to the doctor that day I, it's so weird because 
I want to remember all of the day so well, but I have like blank spots, but I can remember the morning. So I was 13, my sister was eight and my mom, and we were gonna go into Dublin city center because it was like school holidays. We we're gonna go have a fun day, go shopping, get food, whatever. But we said we'll go to the doctor first. So that was fine. So we drove over and we actually got a different GP for the first time ever, which probably saved my life, but let's, let's just go on with the story. So we got a different GP and he brought us in and you know, my mom explained everything. We're looking back on the notes and he's like to me, so you can't see? And I was like, no. And he was like, how bad is it? So I feel like he put, you know, the thing where you're in the room and you read the letters down the other end of the room and I was like, no chance. And he's like, okay. And then he got a laptop screen and he put it right in front of me and he put the letter A and he said read that and I was like I can't like honestly it was right in front of me and it was the whole screen <laughs> letter A I'm laughing now but it was so bad and I, it was just so blurry he kind of stopped and then I, th I he, I think he asked my mom to step out of the room so this is 15 years ago remember and so that's why it's a bit hazy so he asked my mom to step out of the room obviously she's really worried so she goes out with him me and my sister just kind of like sitting there like I'm like, I'm, something's going on, but I don't know because I'm still a child. Like, so anyway, since that, I asked her what happened, and she said that he brought her out of the room. And she honestly thought like I had like cancer or something. Like, I know type 1 diabetes is serious, but she thought something extremely bad like that. And he was like, No, no, it's not that. But I think I know what it is. And she was like, What is it then? And he was like, It's, I think it's type 1 diabetes. And, like, I think she told me she was kind of just like, what, like, how? Because the first thought is, no one's diabetic, so how can she have diabetes? Because often it is hereditary, and no one in my family is type 1 diabetic except me. So she was like, what? Like, what do I do? And he was like, you need to bring her in to the children's hospital. And she was like, okay, Grant, like, do I make an appointment? And he was like, no, you need to bring her now like you need to either bring her now or we're calling an ambulance so that should show you the seriousness of the situation see like everyone's really upset so they came back in no one has told me at this point either you know they don't want to scare me maybe in case it isn't diabetes but they all go back in the room we're going to the hospital that's been made pretty clear but what are we going to do so my mom was only newly driving and obviously she's kind of in shock as well so she called my dad and we were around the corner from my granny's house so my nana said that she would bring us in so i remember this part now i remember i got to my nana's house and she was like standing outside already in her driveway crying because like this is such a serious situation like a very very sick child obviously then that makes me cry and my sister's panicking and crying as well so a very traumatic situation and what i remember then is my I don't know if my dad came or my dad met us in there but my nana brought us into the children's hospital and normally you know you go into A&E and you have to wait there was no waiting around it was literally straight through into the back just in this like room with a bed and millions of doctors and nurses and like so many tubes just hooked up that's what I remember and like at this point still no one's told me I'm diabetic they're running every test under the sun to see what's going on milkshake nearly done okay my mcdonald's is good my mcdonald's is done and it was really really good so they're running every test under the sun and all i remember is really weird all i remember at that point was them saying you're low and really low in potassium so we're gonna hook you up to like a potassium drip like okay and then i don't know how many hours i was there getting every single test every blood test whatever that you can imagine it's so hazy and i really want to remember but i think the shock has just taken some of the memory and the trauma so anyway what i remember then is later on being brought up to the top it was called top flat it's like the ward at the very 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 top of the hospital and it's where you go to be like sorted into the ward that you need to go in so obviously i needed to go into like the renal diabetic ward but at this point there's no bed so i'm up there just waiting with people are just waiting for like every other different thing with their kid 
and this is a funny memory so obviously like we know nothing about diabetes at this point no one's even told me i'm diabetic yet so and you know with diabetes like you have to go to the toilet all the time if you have a high blood sugar that's obviously one of the symptoms is frequent urination so bear in mind like i'm still really sick at this point i haven't gotten any insulin yet they're only finding out what's wrong so i remember my dad was up there with me and he brought me like you know what you bring people in hospital like seven up sweets <laughs> juice so yeah my dad has given me this apple juice so i start drinking it and if you don't know apple juice is like what you would use for a low blood sugar treatment it's so sugary that it will just shoot up your blood sugar or you would need a lot of insulin to cover it i don't have insulin at this point i don't even know i'm diabetic i don't know that i can't have apple juice so I drink like a carton and obviously it skyrockets my blood sugar up from like whatever it was already pretty high and the nurse was like did you eat something and I was like no and then because she's checking my blood sugar she's like did you eat something and I'm like no and she's like did you drink something and I'm like yeah and she was like what did you drink and I was like apple juice and she was like you don't have apple juice anymore that's all I remember she was like that so yeah so then anyway I was brought to I think the next day I went down to the diabetes ward in the hospital and it was a really really nice ward just three beds in each like big room and it's for people who are diabetic of children who are diabetic or children who have like kidney issues that kind of thing anything like that so yeah I was in there and I don't remember what day it was but I feel like I had to wait for a doctor anyway so I feel like I was I was in definitely in there a few days before like any insulin happened or maybe I was getting insulin through a drip and I didn't know it but I wasn't doing injections or I wasn't being taught anything and to tell you how skinny I was so at age 13 I was under four stone nothing left and we'll get on to the serious complications in a minute I remember in the wards them coming around like constantly checking the blood sugars on the machine now bear in mind no one's told me that you're diabetic or that you're gonna have to do this blood sugar test for the rest of your life or that you're gonna have to take injections so for the first few days I was just kind of like just I don't even know I don't remember how I felt or anything I feel like just in shock and just in the hospital at least getting better but knowing something's really wrong doctor came around and the nurse and I think they were like you're type 1 diabetic and obviously they have to explain that in a way to a child so I remember there was like a book like Pete the Pancreas or something like that basically like all drawings and saying like insulin is the key that opens the door that lets the sugar into the cell and you'll feel amazing so they brought around the injections and the blood glucose meter I don't remember the blood glucose meter learning that obviously I did but I remember them showing the injections and I remember them asking my parents to inject me first and I think they did it like twice and I just hated that like uh, I couldn't like let my mom and dad be doing that like I needed to take control myself immediately and you know at least I was a bit older I was 13 it's still a massive thing at that age like a chronic illness and to learn how to control it but I just I could I just felt like I need to do this like I know people go through periods of denial with diabetes I never went through anything like that I just was like this is my life now like I have to do it and I want I just wanted to get better I think so immediately I started doing my own injections obviously there was huge learning curve like I wasn't carb counting or anything at that point I was just on set injections so it would have been like insulin morning lunch dinner and snack so I like you were using insulin to keep up with the amount of food you're eating like you couldn't deviate from meal times or meal plans at all so you had to eat exactly at the times you had to eat everything even if you weren't hungry there's a lot of things about diabetes and food and like mental impacts like that i'm not going to go into it in this video but you can imagine like being so restricted what you eat when you eat being monitored it it feels a lot so anyway at this point you know i'm getting checked over and my mom was like she's saying she can't see and it sometimes can happen with diabetes that you can just get blurry vision and it goes away you know after your blood sugar comes down you start to get better and that just wasn't happening you know obviously my blood sugar was starting to come down a bit I don't even know what it was when I was diagnosed I forgot to say when I was with the GP and he was doing the letter on the screen he did do my finger prick then and 
it just said high so i think that's like over 30 blood sugar like off the charts so i don't know what the actual number was but i'm saying it was definitely higher than like 30 35 obviously i didn't know at the time what a blood glucose meter was or what this thing that says high on it is but it meant yeah your blood sugars are out of control and obviously the ketones were off the chart i was in dka which is diabetic ketoacidosis which is extremely dangerous for any diabetic so i don't know how long i was in dka for but I was in it for a long time and but I was definitely in it so yeah so she's saying you know her vision is blurred they're saying it'll go away she's like no you need to check it so we had to she had to fight for an appointment down at the eye clinic and at this point mentally like I was upset when I saw like my nana crying I remember being upset and I don't really remember being upset like in the hospital doing injections or blood glucose things i don't remember being upset i just remember being like right i have to accept this to get better but the point where i cracked was then when i went to the eye clinic and i was seen there so i remember going in i remember i've been through like so much at this point learning that even new disease trying to do all this just being so physically sick as well and then I go in, they look at my eyes and they just said it out there and then they didn't take my parents into another room. They were like, you have cataracts in both your eyes. Obviously explained what that was. That's when the lenses are fogged up so much that you can't see out of them and there's no way to repair that without surgery to put in new lenses. So that's why you're basically visually impaired at this point because you can't see, I couldn't see like a face in front of me. Like that's how much we're talking when they told me that i had cataracts i basically just broke down i remember leaving because you go by the waiting room where all the other children are when you leave and i just remember bawling crying and being brought back up to the top flat because i think that was just like you're so sick being diagnosed with this now you're different like from everybody else you have a chronic illness you're still 13 years old and now you're having been told and now you're being told you have cataracts and you have to have a double surgery in both eyes to remove them also just get over that illness that you have as well just try to get to a place where you could deal with that so mentally i think that was the point where it was really bad but you know i didn't let it like it's hard to explain i didn't let it send me into a really bad place mentally like i just started to have to deal with that as well so yeah that's kind of like the diagnosis day slash few days after so i think i've explained everything i'm trying really hard to remember everything but i can't remember if i have but i think i have so i think i was in the hospital for a few weeks in july anyway and then i was brought home but i had to learn all about diabetes i remember having my first hypo oh yeah the first hypo I remember it so well so I was allowed like a day trip out of the hospital so I was still going back that night I was allowed to go out for the day and see how I got on managing the diabetes and my parents helping me obviously so we decided to go to the cinema and I remember having a low blood sugar and obviously this whole time I was super super high blood sugar so I probably never experienced a low blood sugar but I remember the feeling just awfulness of being weak and shaky and just feeling like crap and having to like do my blood sugar with the real flimsy old blood sugar machine and like shaking and blood going everywhere ah oh, it's like a core memory that's not a good one but i yeah i can remember my first hypo let me know if you can remember your first hypo in the comments because i just remember it so clearly so then yeah i got out and basically everyone was terrified of me like you know i used to go over to my friends and my nana's before it wasn't like that when i first finished so i remember going over i used to go over to the church with my nana so my dad would drop me there and i'd meet my nana in there and i remember her seeing me and being like terrified of me just a weird feeling people being afraid of you because you have a chronic illness being afraid that you're just gonna like collapse like right there and then when that's not it at all i know there's things with type 1 diabetes like people have to be aware but like when people are afraid of you it's a whole different story so i stayed off school anyway because i was too sick and i also couldn't see and i got better got my blood sugars under control obviously like i said i was under really strict eating meal plan doing that and i had my first surgery i think before christmas of 2008 for my 
cataract and that was a really weird time because i had one eye good then and one eye bad the surgery i can do a video on cataract surgery if you want to hear about that i'm not going to go into detail over here but it was painful but it was amazing to be able to see again so bear in mind i've like at this point they did the left eye first i had one i think they did the left yeah one good eye one bad eye so really weird and then i had a puppy at the time i family dog holly i'll put a picture of her here and i needed to stay away from pets for my eye to heal and not get an infection so that was so sad because you know if i was inside we'd have to put her outside and you just see her through the window looking at me and it's so sad i didn't go to school i just like went over to my nana's house and i couldn't really do anything because i couldn't see like i couldn't read i couldn't watch tv i remember like trying to look at my phone like covering like the bad eye and being like trying to squint to see my phone uh, and obviously this is when phones just had text so yeah I had my second surgery early maybe like January or February 2009 that went well so now I'm able to see again and once that healed I think maybe I think it was after the midterm break so definitely end of February start of March I went back to school I remember the first day I had to put on my uniform now remember I was like a skeleton basically before like I had no weight on me and I still had the same uniform, so I went to put it on that day and I couldn't even get one leg into it. That'll explain to you how thin I was. And I'd put on the weight that I needed to to get me to a healthy weight of what like a 14 year old should be. And yeah, I couldn't fit into my uniform. So I didn't go back to school that day. I had to go and get a new uniform made for me. But I was happy because I was getting better. And obviously they're closely monitoring me. I found out I was celiac in 2009 just from the routine tests that were going on. I had a biopsy to confirm it. And that was just another thing. Like, it was a really rough period of time from the summer of 2008 to, like, 2009. So, yeah, it was pretty rough. And that's kind of my diagnosis story. So, that's where I am now. Here I am with my channel 15 years on. I'm going to do a diversary vlog. So, today... Although this is out on my diversary, isn't my diversary. I'm just doing my diagnosis video, so I'll definitely do a little vlog. I do try to celebrate because, as you can see, I've come so far. Like, I'm really proud of all I've gone through and I've come out the other side and I didn't let it, you know, weigh me down. And, you know, if anyone is struggling or is newly diagnosed and wants to reach out or is diagnosed a long time and wants to reach out, please do because I really love meeting new type 1 diabetics and hearing from others so thank you so much for watching i hope i don't know whether i say enjoyed this video but i hope this video helps make sense into why i have this channel because when i was diagnosed things like this channel didn't exist there was no one to look for like for years i didn't know anyone else who was diabetic like that's just so weird like and it it felt just me me and my family me and the whole world the only person diabetic is how it felt and you know i went through different things being young with type 1 diabetes not going to go into them here and also dealing with how people think of you like i mentioned people were afraid of me but also like people do treat you unfairly sometimes being type 1 diabetic but that's a different video so yeah i hope it was informative if you enjoyed the video please give a big thumbs up comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel and i will see you all next week for my diversary vlog where i'll be celebrating 15 years diagnosed with type 1 see you all